Welcome to Exploring the Paranormal. Hosted by Heather Lee, Ph.D., Exploring the Paranormal offers a new, fresh look into paranormal research. Join Heather as she discusses some of the many haunted locations worldwide, discusses why these locations are haunted, hear from paranormal researchers about their personal experiences at these locations. Additionally, Heather takes a journey into the science behind the paranormal, discussing topics such as thermodynamics and the Heisenberg Principle and how they both affect paranormal activity. Now, your host of Exploring the Paranormal, Dr. Heather Lee. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to today's episode of Exploring the Paranormal. I am super excited to have you all here and watching and listening. Um, hope you guys find the show entertaining and you get as much information as you can about the paranormal field and those who are involved in it. Today, I have some amazing guests. <clears throat> I know David is already backstage, and we're just waiting for Christy to join us, and then I'll bring them both in. They are the host of Our Haunted Lives. David, he's been on the show before when Christy couldn't make it, so I'm so glad she's going to be here today. And um, you guys know he's amazing. Uh, lots of laughs. Uh, we have fun. So no specific topic today, just whatever comes to your mind, um, whatever comes to my mind and questions that I have. And we're just going to have a general chit-chat about all things paranormal and so if you guys have any questions, you go ahead and start asking away. Um, it can be about recent paranormal experiences you've had, questions about, you know, I'm going to throw this out there just because, and I'll explain a little bit more later because we have another show coming up about it. But orbs, love questions about orbs, and David's probably backstage laughing already now. <laughs> um, and we're just going to have uh, lots of fun today. But before we get started, I want to, you know, talk to you guys about a whole bunch of different things. I'm so excited. I just finished the editing process of my newest book. So that will be coming out September 11th, Haunted Florida Go or Haunted Florida Lighthouses. Sorry. I'm working on Haunted Florida Ghost Towns right now and almost done with that book. Absolutely. That's going to be a fun one as well. So stay tuned. This time around, I know I wasn't able to do it before, but I want to do a virtual book signing for people who can't be here um, in person to do it here in Florida. So make sure you stay tuned for that. And I also have a whole bunch of different things that we can do um, to get you guys copies of the book. You can order any of my books from History Press or Acadia Publishing. They're also available online at um, am on Amazon. You can order them from Books A Million, Barnes & Noble, I know Target, Walmart have them. They're inside um, Southern Nevada Walgreens. I just received notification that my Ghost and Legends of the Vegas Valley is at the Mob Museum, the uh, Railroad Museum in Boulder City, and um, uh, oh, shoot. I, oh, um, the museum in Elko. I was trying to think of the state. I kept saying uh, the city. I kept saying I wanted to. Um, Reno, but it is an Elko. I just got that notification. And then also, from what I understand, both books are available at the Clark County Museum. So you guys can pick them up there. And here in Florida, of course, you know, again, Walgreens, I know um, the different lighthouses are going to carry them, as well as certain locations such as Hubbard's Marina in Johns Pass, Mel Fisher's Museum out in Vero Beach and Sebastian area. And just all over the place, there'll be, you know, local museums as well. So once I get a full list of where that book will be, I'll let you know. But as always, you guys know, you can send me an email message on Facebook or whatever you want. The books sell for $21.99 plus uh, shipping and tax. Um, but if you order it directly from me, I have several copies of the two books that are out. Um, I just charge a flat rate of $25 and that includes your tax and shipping. And I will also autograph it and personalize it for you. So make sure you guys keep your eyes open for that new book coming out. I'm just super excited. Um, I'm also placing my order too, so I should be getting those. I think they said I would be getting my order in late July, early September. So I see a couple of you guys joining in already. Hi, Lee. Welcome to the show again. And uh, Tina, I do see your question there. I'll make sure I get that asked during the show. And good morning. Um, I hope I don't butcher this name, but is it Dupra Sherry? Um, 
good morning and thank you for joining us. And I'm happy to have everyone here. Okay, just a few more things that I wanted to talk about. When I had mentioned earlier, you can ask questions about orbs. That's because on Ghost Education 101 on not, not tomorrow, but next Wednesday, May 24th, we are going to have a panel discussion on orbs. It's going to be a fun show. I have a whole bunch of pictures that people have sent me, um, videos that I've pulled offline that we're going to have a panel discussion with David Taylor, Bill Slevin, Larry Lawson, and Nick Carbani discussing and analyzing the different photos that I have pulled offline to offer everybody guidance and um, kind of tips and tricks on how to determine if an orb is an orb or if it is just a backscatter or some type of reflection. My favorite orbs are the, um, whatchamacallit, security camera, the night vision security cameras. Love those. Those are those are fun to watch. Um, and also Real Hunts Ghost Towns and Real Hunts 3 are available now on Prime Video for $4.99 each. Or you can watch them. I think they're still on Tubi. If not, I know Real Hunts 3 is still on Tubi for free. And don't forget, we were going to start June 1st, but I just want to let everybody know that Passport to the Paranormal with myself and Joe Frankie will start June 8th because Joe will up be out of town on a case. And that'll occur Thursday nights at 10 p.m. Eastern, 9 p.m. Central. We're going to have a lot of fun with this one. I think we've come up with, oh, I pronounced the name correctly. <laughs> I'm glad I did. Thank you so much. Um, but Joe and I are going to be kind of doing a fun little thing. We're going to rotate turns. Um, one week, Joe's going to pick the topic. Next week, I'm going to pick the topic. Then week three, what we're going to do, um, I find this kind of funny, funny is I'm going to pick um, 10 questions about the paranormal and ask Joe, put him on the spot. And then Joe's going to ask 10 questions to me about the paranormal. And then the fourth and fifth, if there is a fifth week, we will have a special guest on our show joining us to um, interview and to discuss different things about the paranormal. And one more thing, I see Christy is backstage. I just want to remind you guys, registration will open mid-July, but I am teaching online classes for TMCC. One is September 5th, and that is the ABCs of Paranormal Research. And the other one is October 9th, and that is Ghost Hunting 101. Both times are 6 to 9 p.m. Pacific. So stay tuned. I have information on that on my page, as well as the link and the phone number to register. So that will be happening directly through there. Everybody who watches or participates in those classes will be entered to win a free copy of one of my books of their choice. And also... I will record the class for those who attend so you guys can have a copy to replay it for yourself later on if you miss something during the class. Okay, with that being said, I am super excited to bring on our guest, um, David Taylor. Like I said, he's been on our show before, and Christy is also backstage. So uh, let's welcome the host of Our Haunted Lives, or Our Haunted Life. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Hi, good morning. Hello. Good morning. Good. I love both of your backgrounds. <laughs> Oh, my Ouija board. When, when I get bored, I'll just take it down and I get this big planchette and I'll just do it, you know. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> That's when you, you lay it down and you take the little ghost balls or cat balls. Yeah. And yeah. roll them and tell the ghost to stop it on whatever letter. <laughs> exactly. balls And whichever one lights up is the one that you take. Oh, it's a B. Oh, exactly. <laughs> wow, what's going on with Christy? Yeah, I was just going to say that. <laughs> She's what? frozen. You're going in and out, Christy. I'm frozen? Yeah. All right. <laughs> yeah, she'll come back. She'll it, come back. It's the ghost. <laughs> um, no, we, we, um, Christy has always had her, her background. Um, the way that she's had it, she's had a really good one. Um, mm -hmm. I, on the other hand, uh, have, 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 have come up through the, the ranks with, with my background. It was, um, it was really, uh, it was really bad at first cause I had like white sheets and I had the lighting, but, um, white sheets, uh, reflect and black sheets absorb. So I had to get uh, some black sheets and then mm -hmm. I had to pick up my uh, little trinkets. Like I have, uh, I have the uh, Grim Reaper of New Orleans up here that mm -hmm. I got in New Orleans, which is great. Scully, which I got in Salem. Um, and if you could see it better, it's actually has like a Ouija board thing all over the skull. Mm -hmm. And then I got uh, Mothy down here and which I actually got from the Mothman Museum. And then uh, over here, 
I just got the, you know, my lava lamp and, and, you know, there's Grogu over there. Christy. I'm back. Oh, yeah, much better. Much better. <laughs> much better. I don't so know I was just, I was having trouble with my computer and I thought I'd plugged in the, I always plug in the, the, what's it called? The coax cable that. Yeah. The ethernet. Yeah. The yeah. ethernet always plug that in. And apparently I plugged it into the wrong thing. <laughs> <laughs> So I ran real quick to go check it. I was like, well, no wonder it's not working right. It's in the wrong hole. <laughs> Always happens that way. Always it is. It sucks. <laughs> oh, hold on. I'm getting a... So how have you guys been? Oh, Todd's laughing at you backstage. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit of 10 o'clock in the morning humor there, Todd. <laughs> exactly. I was uh I was gonna ask if you had your coffee yet, Christy. No, I have oh, not. No. <laughs> I want Why? coffee so bad right now. <laughs> I was gonna say I have my coffee. Go ahead and get it. <laughs> oh, I need to make it. I need to make it. I was gonna say now that it's working, she had a shot of espresso when she was off camera. Yeah, right? there you go. I should have. I, I got have. it. Working. I am not a morning person. This is not no. No, so kind of, kind of go back into how you change your backgrounds, Christy, because mine is usually mm -hmm. set. I'll switch, I'll switch out the poster every once in a while to I see if people have, notice. I have screens. Um, mm -hmm. They're like um, large, Tapestries? like large bl uh, blankets, mm -hmm. and I've got a. Um, <laughs> I kind of jerry rigged the whole thing. If you could see how it's done <laughs> up, you would laugh your butt off. But. Uh, it's a long rope that goes across the back uh, part of my bedroom and I just, just pin them up mm -hmm. yeah. and I do different ones for different things. Like, you know, if I'm, in, if we're interviewing somebody in the vampire community, I have my, my, uh, my vampire screen up that yeah. has the, the castle and everything. in I it. I love or, that one, by the way. I love that one. Yeah. Or the skeletons with the rose. It's just yeah. different stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah, we're, we're moving and I'm actually going to have a separate office. Finally, mm -hmm. I'm not going to be functioning in the living room. Like I right. Do right. And I'm having a bookshelf built behind my desk and part of the instructions include clamps and hooks so I can sure. put a screen up. Right, right. Yeah, I'd like to move mine into another room too instead of in my bedroom. But my bedroom <laughs> is so huge that it's the only room that not being occupied by another living person or or a studio music stuff. <laughs> but but 19 million haunted dolls. So Yeah, I don't have that many. <laughs> I know. I know. <laughs> I have two. Oh uh, yeah. I Unfortunately, my bedroom, my husband's in my bedroom for work and he does a lot of conference calls during the day. <laughs> right. <laughs> so I kind of got shoved downstairs. <laughs> Yeah. Well, most of the time, most of the time we record, we record at night. Um, so, and I do share an office with my wife too, but yeah, I mean, like I was saying of, of, I have the, uh, the clothesline gimmick also with the, with the sheet on it for, for the background and it's, it's not working too well cause it's during the day now. So if you see like right up here. You can the see there's a little bit of through. light. Yeah, there's a little bit of lights coming through. So yeah, I was wondering how mine was gonna do too, because I've got <laughs> windows and everything it and it's okay. light coming and through. But you know, and I don't know if you agree with this, Christy, but it really, it really um I think it really enhances uh your shows if if you do have have like a nice background and things like that. And I'm not saying anything against you, Heather. You're moving. No, no, no. Oh, Trust I me, I, I know my faults. No. <laughs> No, but we, yeah, I come think, on, David. You're just totally throwing Heather under the pot here. <laughs> That's to insult the host. Just exactly. yeah. I have you on. I'm gonna no, tell everybody it's... you believe in orbs. Oh, who me? Oh, I cannot wait for this. I cannot wait for the orb show. I can't wait. Every every photo you're gonna show me, you're gonna be like, no. 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 And some of them are from news stations. Oh, okay. Yeah. That, that cool. shared, you know, shared uh -huh. uh, photos. Check out this photo that we captured while we were doing a haunted story for Halloween. No. Should I, should, I, <laughs> should, I, should I shake my towel so a bunch of orbs start flying around me or no? Right. Can I clap my hands in the middle of a dusty yeah. room? Oh, it's an orb. <laughs> Actually, I think one of them came from Orb Connection, which is an organization studying okay. orbs. Okay. Well, I'll listen. I'll listen. You know what I'm saying? It's it's just like, you know, we 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 like to listen to a lot of people and and that's why we have people in the show. But I don't know, man. You know, orbs I don't know are if, a hard thing for me to yeah. anything with yeah. pictures is a hard thing for me to 
uh, because of pareidolia. Yep. You always have your your pre program to see a face in everything. I mean, look, just like Jesus and the toast. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, we're pre-programmed to see stuff like that. So it's, yeah. it's very easy for some, oh, that's a face. That's a body. That's a figure. That's because we want to see what we recognize, you know, mm -hmm. and yeah. so, you know. And, and it's tough too, because if you're not there, you don't know, you know, cause like we have a photo and I know because I was there <laughs> that right. nobody was outside because we had heard noises. So we walked around the entire building and it's in the middle of Goldfield and, you know, nowhere. Right. And I took a photo in the dark, just shooting out the window and outside there was a light and you can see a silhouette of a figure looking in the window. Mm -hmm. But everyone else is like, you know, oh, that's, you know, someone standing outside or, you know, that's a trash can. Or right. That. It's like, no, that's it. You know, I know because I was there. Right. <laughs> sure. But sure. It's so hard when you're not there to know that. Yeah, the well, definitely. It. I mean, it's just the case in point, just um, just feeling something and, you know, you mm -hmm. felt it, you know, you were touched, you know, mm -hmm. you had felt that ominous feeling before it happened. Um, even people that don't have abilities can, they know when mm -hmm. something is shift, yeah. right. but how do you really prove it to anybody? You just, mm -hmm. people just have to believe you, but you know, on photography, if you do have something and you were there and you actually saw it and can explain what was going on when it was actually taken, then that's a little, that's a little more impressive. Yeah. Yep. It's, it's different than just, uh, than just, you know, Same. what a, do you see here? What here, do you see an orb here? Or something like that. You know, <laughs> yeah. you know it's, it's, it's Christy, you, you hit that one right on the head. Thank well, you. thank you, David. Thank you, darling. <laughs> no problem. So Christy, do you notice anything different about me? Well, I don't have my glasses on. So your head looks like a little tiny peanut. So, I, don't, I don't know. I don't have my glasses on. I shaved my beard. You. <laughs> oh no, you did. Yeah, I did. It's what getting too hot out. That for? It's too hot out, man. It's getting oh, hot out. Geez. You know, so. It was bugging me. It was, it was just one of those things of, you know, like you get a. It's like, I can't see. I can't a, have my glasses on. You get an itch and you got to scratch. And I'm just like, today, I'm shaving today. So <laughs> it was the first time in a year. So Yeah, I think I'll shave my legs today, too. Be the first time in a year. <laughs> Courtney Lopez says, what beard? She doesn't remember one. Oh, wow. Courtney, I, I've had a beard for, for a long Forever. time. So, yeah. 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 There are certain pictures though that I do put out, like the the um the promo pictures. I shaved I shaved when we got our promo pictures done though, Christy. Remember? And you're like, you should have kept your beard on. Yeah. And I was I like, yeah. I don't want to look like Johnny's Athis. <laughs> <laughs> Plus, it makes me look younger. There's nothing wrong with looking like Johnny. That's, that's exactly what you said. <laughs> the Godfather. Yeah. The Godfather. Come on. Uh, no, it was just, it was, uh, I think, I, I think I just had, had to get rid of it for a little bit, you know? So, yeah. You know how it is. I understand. Yeah. It's a change, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Maybe I'll, I'll shave, I'll shave my legs today. Okay. Awesome. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Interview is this interview. So, so is I'll have to have her on the show again so she can show that off. <laughs> <laughs> show that I finally shaved my caveman legs. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I completely get that. I had to shave mine the other day because I was going to see the knee doctor. <laughs> yeah. Isn't that funny? The older you get, the only reason why you shave is if you know you're going to be out in public. Yeah. And somebody might see. Yeah, I, I, like, I hear it from my ready, wife, too. I'm getting ready to go to Tampa uh, to the beach in a couple of days. And I went to Walmart yesterday to buy a bathing suit. And I'm crying on these bathing suits. Nope. 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 <laughs> nope. <laughs> and finally, I'm like, well, this one's not too bad, but I'm going to have to shave places I haven't shaved in ever forever. <laughs> <laughs> but I guess, you know, you got to when you go to the beach. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the trials and tribulations, women. Uh, what part of Tampa are you going to? Uh, near uh, Yarbor City. Okay. Yarbor City. Yeah, Ebor, Yabor, yeah, Ebor. It depends like on who you talk to. They all we all pronounce it differently down here. Right, <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah that's about right on the, from where we're at. We're staying right on the uh, right on the beach. Okay, can't remember the name. It's like a 
it's almost like a little peninsula area where it goes out and you're right mm -hmm. on the ocean. Okay. Um, so we stayed there last year and absolutely loved the condo because you just walk out on your balcony and there's, you know, the sunrise, the yeah. sunset right mm -hmm. there. So yes. it's absolutely beautiful. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Depending on traffic, we're about 20, 30 minutes from down from uh, the downtown area. Oh, nice. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. So I'll be really close. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> I'll be down there. Save your legs and come to the beach with me. Yeah. <laughs> I'll be in the keys in July. I'll be in the keys in July. So. It's yeah. funny. I, I, may, I may live in Florida, but I usually don't wear a swimsuit. <laughs> I'm allergic to them. So, <laughs> you know. Courtney, Courtney says uh, wear some shorts or spandex. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, I could do yeah. that. There you go. Some spandex. So are you going to see Robert the doll? Robert the doll. I've already seen Robert the doll. No, I'm not going to see Robert no. the doll. No, I don't like. No, the doll. no, 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 no. Robert doesn't like me. I don't think he likes much of anybody. No, no. <laughs> nope, nope. Yeah, we actually. I saw him many years ago, and we found out that from the Tampa area, you can take a boat to Key mm -hmm. West instead of having to drive to the East Coast and then South. Sure. And it's like only two hours. Yeah. Wow. So we're like, ooh. Yeah, a, a check day it trip out. is now cost, now only a couple hours. I can't, I can't <laughs> right. wait. We're we're driving down, so it's just going to be a really long drive. But I yeah. uh, can't wait to get there because yep. just long like Christy, drive. we've got a condo right on the beach, and it's got a, a yeah. private beach with like four or five condos there, which is great. And just go out and it's own little cove, and I just can't wait to go snorkeling and mm -hmm. get out to to Tortuga Bay or or whatever yep. it's called, and uh, you know, or Tortuga Island. Is it Tortuga Island? The island, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, with the fort. Good. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. with the fort. Yep. Do a little little mini ghost investigation when I'm out there. So. <laughs> that that place is a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah, I can't wait. I can't yep. wait. So, yep. so yeah, it's um, yeah. But just, I mean, lot. even even in Tampa down to to Florida Keys, that's still another what five six hours. Mm -hmm. that's still yeah, way down there. Traffic, yeah. yeah. Yeah, depending on how you go, because. Some some parts of the keys you have to actually go all the way to Miami, right? Yeah, yeah and then we're gonna have to, yeah we're gonna have to go through Miami because yep. we're just coming down ninety five. So yep. it'll be a nice nice long long uh, drive to there, and then depending on who's who's going to the keys that weekend, because you know <laughs> one road in, one road out. That's right. <laughs> exactly. And hopefully hopefully uh, there's no hurricanes coming through at the end of July. Yeah, I don't yeah. like bridges with water under them. They really freak me out. So <laughs> going to the Keys would be difficult for me. <clears throat> I'd have to be in the bottom and the floorboard of the car just sitting there praying, doing Hail Marys, even though I'm not Catholic. Christy, you, you lived in New Orleans, though. Did you ever go over the, the, the bridge uh, over Lake Pontchartrain? I did go over that bridge. It's not a very high bridge and the no. water doesn't, it, the water doesn't do like this, like big ocean water does. Well, I, <laughs> I was scared when I went over that bridge. bridge. <laughs> I, yeah. And then you've got the seven mile bridge in the Keys too. If mm -hmm. you want to get the Key West, you got to go. Over yeah. That. There's yeah. one in Pensacola when I lived in Florida that I had to get used to you go from, um, from what Gulf breeze on into Pensacola. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. And it goes up high. It's not a very long one, but it goes up pretty good. I don't. If I was driving, I'd have to get on the inside lane. I couldn't be on the outside, and I would just have my hands up on the steering wheel, just staring right in front instead of looking to the sides. And mm -hmm. she's telling the truth. Like when we, I remember when we went over to Delaware, uh, the Delaware Bridge, uh, the De Delaware Memorial Bridge, to when we were going up to uh, going up to Massachusetts for yeah. Con. You're like, is this, is this over water? I go, uh, yeah, <laughs> go on the inside. <laughs> I don't want to see anything. Yeah. Get on the inside. <laughs> I'm not afraid of water. It's just something about, I mean, who knows oh, in previous up, life I might've fell off, you know, fallen off of a bridge. Yeah. Or yeah. Who yeah. Knows? yeah. Yeah. No, the bridge I always hated when we lived in Nevada was that one that went over the Hoover Dam. Yeah. That's oh cool. yeah. <laughs> that one, I always got to the inside lane and made sure I couldn't see <laughs> Yeah. yeah, they freak me out. Yep, uh, I'm glad I'm not the only one. <laughs> <laughs> not that I'm glad you guys don't like bridges, but I'm so glad I'm not. I think they're absolutely one. beautiful. I just don't like to yeah. be. Them. <laughs> Christy, if you if you if you were, would you uh, walk the uh, the Golden Gate Bridge with me? 
I would you I feel would better feel, if you were walking? I'd feel or? better if I was walking. Really? Yeah. Hmm. Oh, I, I'd want to get it over with as fast as possible. I'd be crawling across the bridge. <laughs> right. I don't know. I think it just in the car, I feel like I'm if something was to happen, my car is going to just like yeah. Yeah. The, and then trying to get movies. out of the car, you know. <laughs> I watch it too many movies, Christy. <laughs> <laughs> You're probably right. <laughs> too many final destinations. <laughs> yeah, yeah. For yes. real. Oh, if that was man. the case, I wouldn't be getting into airplanes. <laughs> <laughs> I can get into airplanes and fly over water. That's weird. I but know. No, I'm just weird. I guess, I guess, I guess we'll be driving over the bridge when we're in Philly, you know? So, um, it yeah. will be, it will be, uh, I guess we're not going to, uh, take the, uh, take the, uh, the train over cause then you'd be right on the side of the bridge. Oh yeah. Yeah. No, no, not going to happen. Okay. No. <laughs> I like trains. Never been on one. Yeah, you have. We took the subway when we when we were. Well, in that's a subway's a subway. Yeah, but that's what I meant by the train. I'm talking about a woo woo choo choo train. Oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> See what I have to deal with when we go on trips and things like this. She's she's usually not this uh, this perky in the morning though, especially without her coffee. Normally she's like, David, what are you doing up? I go, it's ten o'clock. I'm salivating right now for coffee. I'm almost going to put y'all guys on hold and go. <laughs> Order <don't>, DoorDash. <laughs> right. Who's going to go get it at the door? My dad. <laughs> you hear the ding dong. He's waiting on his coffee too. So he's probably in his bedroom cuff, uh, cussing at me. Where's my coffee? Yeah. T Todd's backstage laughing. He's like, he goes, we have a coffee break coming up. Yeah. In a few minutes. We actually, we can take it now if you guys want to, we can take a quick commercial break before we come back. We do have several comments coming up and questions. Yeah. I told people just to ask questions away and they sure. are. Sure. Awesome. I have my questions for you guys, but so far this is more entertaining than my questions. For <laughs> <laughs> I can get quite dorky, I guess. <laughs> We'll make some coffee and come on back, Christy. Yep, exactly. So we're going to How long do we here. have? A couple minutes? Um, yeah, just a few, a minute or so. I'm not sure. I never really I timed it, but if you're not here, we back, can manage. Christy. Okay. All right. I got your back. <laughs> and we'll be right back after this commercial break. Thank you. Download the new station calendar and never miss another show. To get it is simple and free. Just visit WLTKDB.com to download or tap the subscribe button on our mobile app. Once the file is in your downloads folder, just double click it, authorize it to your calendar and boom, you have every show listed. Not only does it list the shows, but also the links to watch them live. We would like to thank Danny Loosemore for developing this for us and hope you enjoy it as much as we do. Get yours now at WLTKDB.com or just click subscribe on our mobile app. See you at the shows. Put the power of this station in the palm of your hand and download our mobile app. Visit the App Store, Google Play, and search for WLTK-DB Talk Radio and download the app for free. Listen to past shows, download our station calendar right to yours, and even shop. The WLTK-DB Talk Radio mobile app, now available on the App Store and Google Play. Download yours now.
welcome back everyone and it looks like we have a ghost replacing christy for a while <laughs> per perfect fit for the show and i do want to say um todd's book was on the last commercial that we just saw and it is absolutely amazing i was trying to look for it on my bookshelf behind me but i couldn't find it nice. um i'm loving it i'm not quite finished with it yet but it is a really really good book so, nice yeah. i have an outline uh, I've done an outline because I'm I'm really thinking of of writing one also. Mm -hmm. It's just and I've talked to you know many people you know I'm good friends with like Sam Bellatrusis and and some other people and Natalie and stuff and they've written books and I've asked and because it's just the hardest thing to get started because mm -hmm. it's really really scary to put yourself out there. Yeah. You know, and you know, you don't want people to go, oh, and crap all over you and <laughs> stuff like that. So it's just it's very intimidating, but they're all just like. That's the hardest thing to do is to start. Once Mr. You start, Post and Ghost is intimidating. <laughs> That's what I do. <laughs> it's like write your book and go. Yeah. See, if I don't want I'm not reading any comments or anything. So <laughs> Post and Ghost, absolutely. You know, so it's awesome that he did. And mm -hmm. um, I think, yeah. I'm not yeah. sure if Christy has it. I'm not sure if she does, but uh, we'll be checking into it. So, yeah. Yeah. My issue is I'm trying to find an editor for self publishing because. I've done, I mean, I've been freelance writing since I was 16 mm -hmm. and so many times I've gotten back from an editor at the newspaper saying you need to proofread before you submit it to us. Well, my first thought is, well, that's your job. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but then it's like, I read it five times yeah. but because you know what it's supposed to say. Your mind sure. goes over any errors. Yeah. 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 For so sure. I'm, I'm still trying to find, I have about five different books that could easily be self-published, but I'm hesitating on finding that editor. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's the thing is, is just trying to find somebody and then publishing it. And then, uh, I don't know, I'm, I'm dipping my toe in the water, you know, and, and, and things like that. So it, I think it, I think it would be an, an, an incredible experience of, of my story, you know, and mm -hmm. the story of, of our haunted lives and how Christy and I got started yeah. and, you know, it wouldn't be a, uh, it wouldn't be like a, this is how you do a talk show or this is how you do a podcast or anything like right. that. But I would give pointers, you know, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's a big part of my life, you know, mm -hmm. so. Um, oh, exactly. And that would be a good read too. Um, I'm always interested in reading about other people's experiences and how they sure. got started and sure. all that stuff. Sure. And, Absolutely. Yep. Yeah, my thing is, is I'm going to write a book that uh, is a tell all that doesn't oh, get published right. until after I'm dead. That exposes everybody because I have lots. Of, I mean, as we all do, I have lots of little dirty secrets I know about people. <laughs> oh, geez, the, the things I went through yesterday. Oh my God, it was just phone call after phone call. My phone was blowing up, and I'm just like, listen, you know what? I'm working with who I want to work with, and mm -hmm. that's it. You know, yep. I'm not, I'm not. You know, unless I know that they're they're a fake or something like that, or they're not honest, you know, or you know, have pulled some shenanigans, you know, in, in the field, then that's probably, you know, a deal breaker for me, you know, yeah. but other than that, I'm just tired of the drama. I'm just tired of it. So it's so silly. It's, uh, it's draining, you know, yep. it really is draining. It gave me a migraine yesterday. I was like, this is the 20th call that I'm talking about this. And why, why am I still talking about this? Just deal mm -hmm. with it, you know? Yep. Oh. Yeah. I, I have a large network, but I keep my, <laughs> uh, immediate network very small <laughs> yeah 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 and i only trust a few people and there's a few people that i would investigate with yeah, yeah yeah that's why that's why christy and i we we kind of you know we do work with people you know mm -hmm. and and but it's it's basically just just you know uh me and her you know and and you know she's done some really great things for for ohl with the contacts that she has mm -hmm. and it's 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 you know we just get I know tired. nothing. I know nothing about nothing, and yes, I know nobody. You yes, you do. You know, you know everything about everything. You know? <laughs> <So>. <laughs> Except not how to speed along a coffee maker. Do you know it? You never realize how long something takes until you're wanting it to hurry. It's like watching water to boil and making a coffee a pot of coffee. That's not yeah. a slow feat, there. Yeah, I, I experience that every morning before I go live because my dog has to go to the bathroom five minutes usually. Yeah. Today I got right. lucky, and it's like oh. she takes her time. It's like circle, circle. circle. It's like, oh my god! It's like she has to sniff in fifty different places to decide, decide where she wants to go. Sure. Yeah, sure. And, and I swear she has ADHD because the slightest noise, she's like, <laughs> then she has to go investigate. Yeah. It. Um, <laughs> right. What, what are what are some of these questions? I want to get I want to get into some of these things. Me. Oh, no worry. Cough, 
Todd says coffee is life. <laughs> let me scroll back to the top. We have um, Tina asked earlier, just when we first started, how do I know if my dreams are astro travel or just dreams? Oh, wow. Oh, um, that's, that's a good question. That's yeah, a really yeah, good question. Um, I can. Uh, yeah, that's, 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 you. that's, that's your, that's your area, Christy. So. <laughs> um, a lot of times uh, when you have, when you have lucid dreams, lucid dreaming and astral travel are pretty close together. If you can, lucid dreaming is a lot easier than astral travel. Now she's wanting to know if she's doing it. Is that what was the question? Um, yes, yeah, she wants to know if it's how to tell the difference between astro travel and uh, just dreams. Okay, well, astro travel you'll you'll be outside of your body. Yeah. You can look down and see your body laying on the bed. You can uh, you go into different realms. You can even if you have people that know how to astral travel, you can meet people in the astral world. Um, Lucid dreaming is the step before the astral travel, and that one's a lot easier. A lot of people, um, I do lucid dreaming. I, I, it's something I've done since I was little, and I can control my dreams. Um, if it's right before you start to wake up, you don't completely come out of it. And that's the first step into going to astral travel. I wonder if she's had an experience that she's wanting to know uh, if... Um, because you can you can make little symbols or little uh, things inside your dreams that will that'll uh, connect with your head and say, oh, I'm dreaming like mm -hmm. um, I always do this with my fingers. If I'm doing that with my fingers, then it tells me in my dream that, oh, you're dreaming. This is the lucid dream. You're dreaming. And then you can control it the same way with astral travel. Uh, there'll be certain things um there'll be something different in your room. There'll be something, um, your house doesn't quite look like your house, but it has to trigger your mind while you're dreaming. Mm -hmm. That's the hard part is to trigger mm -hmm. yourself to realize, Hey, wait a minute. I am dreaming. This is not, this is, you know, I'm, I'm in my head right now, or my body is just because astral travel, you're actually disconnected from your body. And there are, um, I don't know for a fact because I'm still here talking and breathing. But if you get too far away from your body during astral travel, there are uh, people do say that that you don't come back and you die. Yeah. So I I don't know about you know how much truth there is to that. <laughs> people but, out, man. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's, yeah. She says it's, that dreams that are too uh, too real and like you're half awake, half asleep type of feeling. That would be lucid dreaming. She's lucid dreaming. Okay. And especially if she can control the dreams or if she knows that she's dreaming and still underneath that that REM state, you know, mm -hmm. because dreams happen uh, right before normally right before you wake up. Mm -hmm. That's usually the best time that you dream and you're not as you're not in that deep, deep sleep. So, um, yeah, those are fun when you can control your dreams. I've made out with many a movie stars. <laughs> <laughs> Jared Leto is married to me and he doesn't even know it. <laughs> I, I do know whenever I've tried to astro travel um, intentionally, like laying in bed and, you know, meditating, I feel like I have trouble breathing. Really? So I usually end up stopping myself because it's like, that's the last thing I want is to. <laughs> right. Yeah. Maybe just a little bit that. of anxiety because you're yeah. trying to do it. Mm -hmm. yep. Possibly. But yeah. I, I promise you, you're going to continue to breathe. Even if you go into meditative state, you're going to continue to breathe. Your body, it's like people, oh, they're choking. They're going to die. No, normally if they pass out, they're going to relax and they're going to continue to breathe and they're right. going to be okay. Yeah. So the same way with meditating or mm -hmm. lucid dreaming and all of that, your body's going to take over and breathe naturally. Mm -hmm. Yeah, with with the meditation that I do. Cause I'm, I'm pretty big into meditation and it's, it's not like lucid dreaming or astro projecting or things like that, but I can put myself into places and just imagine like I'm on the top of a mountain and, and things like that. When I really get into, get into you the wanna, deep. You want to hear something really funny about what? Okay. I was, <laughs> I was meditating one night and it, I was doing the, uh, the guided meditation thing where mm -hmm. the guy talks, mm -hmm. um, I think what was the guy's name? Uh, Stephen. He's on YouTube. He, I absolutely love him. I can't think of his name right now. Um, Jason Stevenson. Okay. 
and um we were i was in the snow it was really cold and i'm walking along and then he's all of a sudden he said that we were in um not the north pole what's the opposite of the north pole um antarctica and we're in uh, antarctic mm -hmm. and in my mind I turn upside down because I'm thinking the Antarctic is in the bottom part of the world. <laughs> so the whole meditation, I was upside down thinking that I'm standing in the, on the bottom of the earth. On the bottom of the earth. <laughs> That's crazy. For whatever reason, my mind, as soon as he said Antarctic, I'm like, oh, I'm upside down. <laughs> <laughs> and I had to stop the meditation because I couldn't take it seriously because sure. I was, you know, I was walking upside down and I couldn't fix it in my mind. I couldn't fix yeah. it. So, yeah, that's funny. <laughs> okay. And uh, Tina, you had asked earlier real quick. I, was, I know it's off topic, but she wanted to know the uh, ferry boat to Key West from Tampa. It departs from Fort Myers. And oh, okay. it's ferrygogo.com. Oh, okay. Ooh. There you go. That'll be fun. Yep. So there's that. And Lee commented earlier. She said she went to a oh, nope, wrong one. I that's another comment she made earlier too. But she was talking, she has small things disappearing in her house. She thinks it's her ghost, Todd, who's still living in her house, but he swears he's not moving any items. Could be fairies. Yeah. Uh brownies are uh synonymous for being inside the home. Uh they're helpers, but they can take things and uh, they love mischief. <laughs> So they could move things around. All you got to do is just ask them to put it back or, or <laughs> eventually you'll come across it. But um, the best thing to do to appease any type of the fae is to put anything of cream. Like if you have some little whipping cream, put it in a seashell and put it out on your windowsill or put it in, you know, something that's I like putting them in the seashells because it's it's natural. It's not, uh, I like mm -hmm. to use all naturals possible and just put some cream out or something shiny. They like shiny stuff too. And then just tell them, this is for you. Quit mm -hmm. taking my stuff because I need it. I know you don't mean anything because you definitely don't want to piss them off. Yeah. At least it's not the red, <laughs> at least it's not the red fay. <laughs> yeah. Red fay, no good. <laughs> yeah. Red fay, bad baby. <laughs> no squeezy. <laughs> bad, bad fairy. Yeah. <laughs> bad fay. <laughs> they can get pretty mischievous. Yeah, they can. Yeah, they can. <laughs> Courtney says, uh, when you have those dreams, I'm assuming this is when we we're talking about lucid dreams, it's normally you fighting yourself or facing your own demons. Hmm. Oh. It's an interesting point. Yeah, that sounds like uh well, the first thing that popped in my head is you probably need to go talk to somebody about that. Because if you're fighting yourself and fighting your demons and that's really it, it's something inside and I, I hate to put it this way but there's something going on internally that's yeah that needs to be that needs shadow work done yeah you need yeah. you need to take care of that because if you're yeah. fighting yourself then you've got internal there's, there's there's a good person that can help you too uh Kadrick Olson um is really great yes. with shadow work um he's out in Denver Colorado and he's a, absolutely amazing yeah, yeah he's incredible yeah, and he knows all about lucid dreaming and shadow yeah. work and all that stuff. So he's got a yeah. great approach on everything. I love, I love his, I love his like ten commandments of of paranormal investigating and like nine of them, <laughs> like have fun, <laughs> have fun, have fun. I think What's the first rule of paranormal. Forgotten. I think people have forgotten about that. Seriously, to have fun during investigations. I mean, we're supposed to have fun. <laughs> Yeah, you're supposed to have fun. And, you know, believe it or not, Hold on. the more here's, I laugh. Here's a standard picture. Yeah. I'm mean and I'm paranormal investigator. I am a paranormal like When you see ours, when you see ours, you know, I love the picture that you put out of, of Christy leaning over going like this. And I've got my <laughs> eyebrow uh, like this, you know, and it's, we're having fun. We're having it's, fun. You know, and, and that's what I said, like. I'm not crossing my arms, I'm not doing During it. Investigations, the more, um, when I, before I started working with David, I was working with ghost hunt weekends and the Tennessee Wraith chasers <laughs> and more times than not, we would get more evidence when people were laughing, Absolutely. when people were having a good time because the spirits wanted to join in. They wanted to hear the music. They wanted, 
What happened now? The spirits are talking to you. Right? Yeah. They are. Your um, your computer. They're, went they're off. wanting me to play music. <laughs> <laughs> but we would play music, like we'd play saloon music if it was, uh, you know, from the 1800s or whatever, and or the early 1900s. We'd play saloon music. We would act like we were bordello girls, yeah. you know. Yeah just all kinds of stuff and it really uh it would really get them going and i think a lot of people have forgotten how to have fun while you're investigating i was watching i was watching chris and mike at uh, hotel josephine uh when they were in the bar area when we were there with them in, in right. kansas and their rem pod and the reactions that they were getting and the evps that were getting and chris is so right because chris and mike are such great guys and they were just having a blast people were laughing yeah. Rim pods, you know, yeah. going off, going off, going off. So yeah. she makes a really great point about that and about how investigations really need to be fun. It's, it's, it's serious work also, you know, yep. but I mean, I can't be serious for like four hours straight. Jeez. Man. Yeah. I can't, I can't even be serious no, for a minute straight. <laughs> there's no part of my body that screams serious for that long. There, there's I'm just, I can't I can't be serious like that now I mean if I'm in a place and I feel something dark that's <laughs> next to me then then it's a different of course, story, yeah, it's a different story. Mm -hmm. yeah yeah you yeah. know I yeah. mean I've had things run up on me or mm -hmm. or run in front of me and mm -hmm. appear in front of me and it's a no laughing matter at that point yeah I mean we were having fun uh at the old South Pittsburgh hospital but then it got serious real it got quick. really serious, like really quick with, with the person who helped. Yeah. And, you know, it, you were feeling it before. And then I was with Ashley and you were with, with, with Mike and Josh yeah. was kind of by himself or he's with Jason. And I started passing, uh, like uh, pacing back and forth. And Ashley Marino goes to Christy. She goes, what's, what's up with David? <laughs> Chris just goes, it's just what he does when he starts. Feeling. He does. <laughs> just, just starts happening. You know, I don't um, think I have a telltale anything. I just think it, uh, it's just, I pick up on stuff yeah. and, and then yeah. I run with it. Yeah. Like <laughs> that instance, I was, I was picking up on an old lady, but it ended up not being an old lady. It was a young girl, but she was so anorexic and so frail that she looked like an old lady but she was sick sick and she wanted out of there she was being held there against yeah. her will it was bad and it, it took me what an hour an hour and a half to get her released yeah um so in old health pittsburgh the uh the it, it's basically like jack and jill rooms so the mm -hmm. bathroom's in the middle and then they have a room and a room like that and of course I, I assume they they would have private rooms or stuff like that but yeah i was picking up on it christy was picking up on it her and ashley went into the room and christy's awesome in investigations because when she gets really serious it's, it's really funny so what was <laughs> happening is there was a lot of dark energy that was coming down the hall and going into this room and i was standing by the bathroom I'm trying to deflect it or absorb it. Um, it's just something that I do, and it's very weird sometimes that I do. And Christy and I have, have, have experienced this a couple times when we've been on investigations. And Christy was just like, get the F out of here, David. <laughs> I've got to do this, you know. But it wasn't – it was it was telling me to push – I think she was telling me to – get the energy away a little I bit I was more. telling you to get out of there because I realized the negative was coming up behind me. I was yeah. trying to work with that girl to help her, yeah. but the thing that was controlling her was coming up behind me. And then you were coming up behind me and I didn't want it to go into you. That's yeah. why I was yelling so bad. I yeah. wanted you out of there because, <laughs> but what ended up happening is David luckily ended up moving it away from my back because yeah. that's where it was trying yeah. to attack me was from the back. Yeah, I took it out to the hallway and my catcher was there and Jason Baker were there. And the way that I can really kind of describe this is people who've, who've uh, seen The Shining um, when the elevators open. It was just this wave after wave after wave of like negative energy. And like yeah. afterwards, I mean, we were just, we were done. We still had like five hours there. When yeah, I was just yeah, sitting on the couch. Was, was, I was so tired because yeah. I kept seeing 
the guy would steal her food. And at first I thought he was coming in and, you know, sexually molesting her or something. It wasn't that he was coming in. He was stealing her food. She never got to eat. And he was just a bully. Yeah. He was just a bully. And that energy was still there. And that it wasn't, was that wasn't, her. that was the, that wasn't the only interaction that you had with him that night. Cause we were downstairs in that one room of where you started seeing like a lot of the um, things on the feelings. Well, they were coming through the wall. No, you were focused on this one part of the wall because there was something around and a lot of spirits were coming around, but he wasn't letting them out. Right. And you were, you were like, get out, leave them alone and stuff like that. And it was, you know, it was almost time to go. And so Chris, I don't think we had enough time to do anything about it. Right. No, but it was, it was really, really intense. It was like really intense. Yeah, I kept telling everybody there's stuff on the ceilings. It's on the ceiling. It's on the ceiling. It's on the ceiling. Yeah. Lo and behold, when we went through the EVPs yep. uh, next few days afterwards, there was something on the recorder. It was like, rah, 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 I'm on the ceiling. Yeah. And it actually said, I'm on the ceiling. Yeah, it was pretty, pretty intense. <laughs> and I'm like, you've got to be kidding me. Cause that's the only way that I could prove what I was seeing or what I was mm -hmm. feeling is yeah. if yeah. something like that came through. And sure enough, it did. I was like, thank God I wasn't crazy. <laughs> yeah. it, it's always a satisfying well, that's, that's moment. When you that's debatable. <laughs> Yeah. Yes, I am crazy, but you know, it's crazy nice for ghosts. <laughs> and, and while you're sure that story, I was sitting there thinking the other night I, I had a lizard on my ceiling, but oh, no. I mean, it, it was at night. So mm -hmm. being originally, not originally, but from Vegas, the last seven years in my yeah. mind, it turned that little lizard into a scorpion. Oh, no. <laughs> so and did it start all growing and, and, and growing and right. growing like in uh, yeah. Clash of the Titans where the scorpions start growing and get yeah. bigger and yeah, exactly. So while you're sharing that story, I'm like, God, I'd rather have ghosts coming out of my ceiling. <laughs> <laughs> I lived in Arizona for 30 years, so I understand dealing with scorpions. And, and I always tell people, why didn't, why don't you, why don't you put your lights on outside at night? I said, well, that attracts bugs. Bugs attract mm -hmm. scorpions and tarantulas. Right. So, yep. The Click other night off. I was laying in bed and I was watching uh, Merlin mm -hmm. and um, I love that show. It's an old one, but I love it. And um, I was laying down and all of a sudden I see this movement mm -hmm. and a little tiny mouse. I mean, we're talking maybe two inches, maybe came running up on my bed <laughs> and stopped in the middle of the bed and was just sitting there looking at me. And I'm like, Oh, how cute. Look at the cute little mouse, you know, is that and the one for your snake? No, no, no. Yeah, I wouldn't give it to my snake, but I'm like, okay, should I be freaked out right now? Cause there's a mouse in my house, but it's so cute. It was yeah. so cute. And I went to, to reach for it because I was going to put it outside or do something with it. And it, turned around and took off. Well, about an hour later, I'm still watching Merlin. I got the lights off and everything. That little sucker came right up and sat right on my shoulder. That's right awesome. on my shoulder. And That's I'm like, so okay, cool. am I now the mouse whisperer? Or yeah, what? yeah, you are. <laughs> but of course, I just mine from a spirit. Yeah. Well, see, that's what I was thinking. I needed to pull up because I, I used to work with uh, to uh, animal totems and, and mm -hmm. spirit animals. And, <laughs> and uh, I've got cards for those, but I'm going to have to pull them up. And I know a mouse is one of them. So because that's very odd for an untamed mouse that's running free in my home <laughs> to actually come up like that twice and not be afraid of me. Of course it wouldn't let me touch it or anything, but to come up on my shoulder and me look at it, like, what are you doing? You know? <laughs> so I need to look into that and see what the spirit, uh, what it means to have a spirit animal as a mouse. Yep. Yeah. And you should have followed him to see, he might've been trying to tell you something. <laughs> well, by the time I moved to me, yeah, when I moved to get it off my shoulder, it, it took off. I don't know where it went. So it's probably still in my room laughing at me right now. <laughs> like, like the big spider you throw your shoe at and you miss. And <laughs> Oh, if there's a big spider under your like bed. That, 
I wouldn't be in my room if I saw a big spider. I'd burn the house down. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm not a spider person, not at all. You you're yeah. not gonna last in the desert then, Christy. Yeah. No. Nope. When we it's when good we were for you to visit Vegas, and come back. Yeah. Yeah. When we were moving to Vegas, I did a ton of research on how to keep scorpions out of your home because that uh -huh. was like you know not being from there. That's like yeah. the biggest fear you have moving right, there. Right. And I found cedar wood. Yeah. Does it? Yeah, so I had a spray bottle with cedarwood oil, and I sprayed the whole perimeter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah and i regularly yeah. was spraying <laughs> you can get that uh use the get some like uh doTERRA uh essential oil mm -hmm. yep that's what and, i used <laughs> yep i love doTERRA oh love yep. it mm -hmm. and um because even well peppermint gets rid of mice they don't like the smell of peppermint yep. so i put peppermint on some cotton balls and put it in my little uh closet where i've seen a couple of you know mouse mm -hmm. droppings or whatnot <laughs> and because i live in a very old house it's yeah. an older home it's up mm -hmm. you know it's got it's a nice place but it is older and you're gonna have a mouse here and there yeah. Even people that think they don't have them, you've got oh, them. So oh, don't dear. look at me like I'm the oddball no. out here. No. <laughs> We've Not had them on our patio and I created the spray and yeah. we spray our permit over our patio every time after right. it rains. Yeah. Yeah. Because there's nothing worse than trying to take your dog out and then the dog gets distracted by a rat that takes off running. <laughs> right. Oh, goodness. <laughs> um, Mike, I've got two cats and I don't know why I have them because they're useless. You're supposed to be the. You well, know, they're the older. They're older, Christy. So. Well, Merlin's not, but Augustus, poor yeah. Augustus, he's yeah. lost his front teeth. Yeah. So even if he caught a mouse, yeah, it, 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 he's, what is he going to do? Gum it to death? Yeah, totally. <laughs> <laughs> we, we let our cat chase our lizards and she'll come to us with the tail hanging out of its mouth. Still oh, wiggling. No! <laughs> oh yeah. no. This is like adding insult to injury right there. It's like just gobble it down already. <laughs> <laughs> well, she lets it go. <laughs> oh, does she? Yeah. <laughs> She, 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 she can catch it. She catches it and is like so proud of herself. <laughs> they are. They are. And our dog, when it comes to lizards, she could care less. <laughs> it's like, don't mess with me. Don't waste my time. I don't want a lizard. Yep. <laughs> oh man. You know the weirdest thing I found in my house one time, other than ghost, was a bat. I had a bat in the house and I thought it was a ghost because it started, it started moving my bathroom door, like, and it was moving back and forth. I was like, okay, what's going on here? What's going on here? And then I see this little black thing come out from underneath it. I'm like, what the hell is that? And I looked down and it was a little baby bat. It was Open Dracula coming to see you. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's like, I, I don't know. I attract animals. I don't know. That is how Christy became a vampire. Yes. <laughs> it, a lot. It me. We have yes. the answers. <laughs> <laughs> and there, there, we know how it all began. But no, That's I did. Right. I, I picked it up. Um, I, of course, I got a paper towel and I picked it up because I know they're supposed to have diseases and whatnot. But, um, but they're endangered, in, endangered species. So I had to call wildlife here and they're like well just make sure you don't put it down on the ground you've got to hang it somewhere because i didn't know that they couldn't take <laughs> off they couldn't take off flying from the ground if they're not hanging upside down they can't take off flying so i felt bad i was like i just put it in my shed out there because it was daylight quit laughing at me david and it was daylight i wanted hanging it up to a shirt. In the dark oh here's my bat <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to save the bat. No, it's awesome that you did. Most people would just be like, oh, you know, stupid bat, get out of here. But I, I just find that. it funny. They're like, hang it. And they're like, boop. You hang it like a Christmas my, ornament. Here yeah, you go. Move, move my clothes over. Here you go. Boop. That, that might have been why you had that dream in Antarctica where you're upside down. Yeah. Possibly. Yeah, you're hanging upside down. See, see? there we there go. Going full circle there. I figured it out. <laughs> <laughs> that's so funny see what else have i caught in my house <laughs> you teed that one up i could go i could go many ways with that one Christy. well now i have woke up with something standing next to my bed and yeah. that that's pretty scary that's pretty scary <laughs> having a dark something next to your bed i'm like oh lord what did i bring home this time you brought that home from connecticut 
Yes. Uh, yeah, that's the thing. My home is completely protected. Only positive energies can come in. And I've pissed off a few spirits. One, actually, it sounded like he punched the, the front door. Oh, wow. And then oh. when I looked through the little peephole, I would have seen someone running away. Sure. And right. There was nobody there. And right. it was, he, he was not happy. <laughs> No, it doesn't sound like it. No. We had we had an incredible experience with Annabelle the doll, um, and in Connecticut. Well, and, you did. Well, yeah, mine wasn't so. Well, uh, mine was terrifying. It, yes, well, I mean that's what I mean, but it was still still incredible the the things that happened to us. Um, Annabelle uh, forced me to be blind for about thirty seconds. I challenged Annabelle stared right at her just like this shame shame that's shame so, you, you yeah, need to yeah peggy the doll at zach's museum yeah. yeah oh yeah that doll we had an experience with that doll too okay. oh so, yeah we did yeah. and yeah. i was supposed to say hello and goodbye to it and i looked at it and am i allowed to cuss on this i'll go right ahead okay <laughs> i looked at it i said i'm not fucking saying hello or goodbye to you <laughs> and i don't know why i did that i got angry while i was in there with her that's just how it made me feel and i didn't i turned around turned my back to her and walked right out damn it yeah there we and go. then and then everybody was lining up to go through the little clown thing like towards the end the little circus thing and and then all we heard was this on the door mm -hmm. right we called the guy over and we There's go nobody in there go is somebody in there he goes nope and the people the people because <laughs> The people, the first people, I don't know where they were from, but they go, that's it. I'm out of here. <laughs> so, yeah, Because you know how when you leave a room, they shut the door and lock it <clears throat> so nobody else can go into that room. Mm -hmm. Well, we had already come out of Peggy the doll's yeah, room. Everybody was out and they had yeah. shut the door and locked it. Well, we're waiting to go into another room out in the, we're out in the hallway. And all of a sudden that door handle just, -ch 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 -ch. Yeah. and it's coming from the inside yeah. Yeah. because we're staring at the doorknob. It's like nobody's <laughs> it touching good. it. Yeah. So we got the the worker over there, and he's like, "No, there. I've locked the door. There's nobody in there." I was like, "Oh, <laughs> think Time again." <laughs> yeah. Think again. Yeah, but no. Um, that museum's Annabelle, no joke. That museum's no joke. Oh, it's no joke. You got to yeah. be careful when you go in there. It affected it affected everyone. We were there with uh, Alicia Gut Gutierrez and her husband, Roman. Alicia mm -hmm. goes by Cosmic Divine. She is a great reader, um, um, you know, and Christy and myself. And Alicia was affected first, then I was affected, and then Christy was affected. Um, and Roman was the only, only, only one who wasn't. But, um, you know, I was affected downstairs of, of where the Bella Lugosi mirror is and, and where, you know, the, the, the sat satanic rituals were happening. Mm -hmm. um, was Alicia, was she the one at the Bunny Ranch one? She felt really bad or something like that there? Hers was the Longfellow or the Goodfellow oh, or whatever. Yeah, it something like that. When we first went in there, she was having, I think she was just having troubles acclimating her, how she, how, how her body was reacting yeah, to the whole yeah. place in general. Yeah. She's <laughs> super sensitive, so. Yeah, I got I got vertigo. I couldn't stand up straight. I had to leave. I had to leave and go outside and come back. And then, Christy, you had your experience and uh, with the debug box. Yeah. Moment. So if you want to call it that? Yeah. Well, <laughs> it was pretty crazy. You're like, I gotta get out of here. <laughs> I just uh, have you seen the debug box there, Heather? Have you been yeah. in there? I haven't been in there, but I've seen the debug box. Yeah. Okay. Well, they they take you into a a, a waiting room and they give you they talk to you about it. And when you go in, it's like a circle, you go in and you circle around it. So everybody can get a look and they can keep everybody moving. Mm -hmm. While well, once I go through the door frame, I don't even see the Dybbuk box yet, but I go through and it's pretty dark. All of a sudden my spirit guides are saying, turn around, turn around, yeah. turn around. And I'm hearing it from all different angles. So I'm turning in circles, like 360 in circles, because I'm reacting to every turnaround that I hear. Mm -hmm. But it keeps me, I'm like running into walls. I couldn't figure out how to get out of there. Mm -hmm. But it was so intense, I didn't even want to see it. 
Yeah. Because something was telling me, get the fuck out of there. And yeah. but I couldn't find the way out. They had to get some workers, uh, the the tour guides over yeah. there to grab me and take me out. It was pretty I, intense. It, it, was, it was really intense. Yeah. And then I, and almost, then I was mad because I've always wanted to see it. Then I almost punched the uh, little kid who was being a clown. Remember when we're going oh, through the yeah. thing, that last part? There's one last part where it's all this clown shit. And I'm like, okay, that's it. And I knew, I knew somebody was going to come up behind us. I knew it because you just know. David was going to drop kick one of them little clowns. Yeah, and and this and was little 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 person, and it's going yeah yeah. And I go, not right now, bro. Just not right now. You know, like get away from me. <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> he has to make some entertainment value, you know. Oh, I know. I don't like clowns, man, and especially little ones like that. And I don't. I don't feel like going to jail in Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, lo I loved that place. I'd like to get yeah. back. Um, yeah. The Bella Lugosi mirror, I pretty much, I was trying to scry in it and everybody was trying to pull me away. They're like, that's long yeah. enough, Christy, that's long enough. And I'm like, no, it's not. Oh, she would. Leave me alone. <laughs> I was, I was out of there. Roman got me out of there and Christy's just like, I look so pretty in this mirror. <laughs> <laughs> look at me. <laughs> Yeah, it was, it was definitely, um, if you ever go there, make sure to get the RIP experience, not the VIP, the yeah, RIP. The RIP. It. Yeah, um, so, you know, uh, so you can see the different rooms and things like mm -hmm. that. So Yeah, I used to drive by it all the time, but, and I had a friend who owned the one building next door that okay. Zach ended up buying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, and she, she knew the place was haunted and she actually now owns a haunted church in Ohio. Oh, oh wow. wow. Yeah. So wow. she, gotta love haunted churches. We'll be, exactly. We'll be, we'll be going to Ohio probably in June. Yeah, <laughs> I'll to get you guys connected. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for real. Yeah. For but anyway, real. Uh, we got off track there. But Annabelle. <laughs> oh, <ahead>. Annabelle. <laughs> oh. Should I yeah. should I tell him, David? <laughs> well, it's up to you. It's it's very personal to you. You know, it's very personal about what happened. I mean, mine was mine was a quick little thing, like a yeah. You know, when you're mine yelling at somebody and they just punch you in the nose. Days. Yeah, hers Mine was, was ongoing. Yeah, um, was I've only talked about it once on live or um, with anybody, but I can go ahead and do it again. It's been a while. I'm all right. Um, I went in <laughs> <laughs> as long as I don't start having dreams again. Um, yeah, yeah. I went in and she started talking to me. She um, because we we had got to go into where they were having all of the uh, the Warrens um, artifacts. Things. Yeah. yeah, artifacts and whatnot. Um, we got a special showing of it. So there was just myself and one other person in that room at the time. So I stood right in front of her and was communicating with her. And she was showing me she was a little girl, had a blue dress on, blue ribbons, and was telling me, you're so pretty. Um, would you take me out here? I, I just... I want to go with you. I want, I want to hold your hand. I want to this, I want to that, you know, and you're so pretty and, you know, just really nice things. And, um, Josh had to pull me away from her and I kept, you know, going back to her because she was just so sweet. Mm -hmm. Well, I ended up leaving, didn't think anything about it at all. We go back to the hotel, we lay down to go to sleep and I start dreaming about the Warrens and about Annabelle mm -hmm. and I won't go into everything that happened to the dreams. That's a little bit too intense, but um, mm -hmm. I, it was, you, I guess people would call it sleep paralysis, but it wasn't because I, I could not move. I couldn't anything and I'm screaming and I'm yelling and I'm trying to come out of it and I just couldn't come out of it. And David, I guess he heard me. She was uh, screaming and yelling. It woke and, me up. And he had to he had to wake me up. But as soon as I'd go back to sleep, I'd go right back into it. Mm -hmm. This happened at least what four times that yeah. night. Yeah. yeah. Happened four times that night. And every time I'd go back to sleep, it would continue the dream. It wasn't like this this was something really affecting my memory, affecting my mind. Yeah. There was there was literally something there uh, that was holding me down and I was seeing stuff uh, of the Warrens. I could probably describe their house, their backyard, their everything. And I've never been there. Mm -hmm. um, all this stuff that it was showing me. And 
I, I I lost so much sleep. It happened the next night. Mm -hmm. Then it happened at David's brother's house when we were on the way home. This happened to me three or four nights in a row where I would just have these horrible nightmares and the doll would be in it. The <laughs> doll and the shape of the little girl that it showed me when we were there. It got to a point where I was afraid to go to sleep. Yeah, it was bad. Um, yeah, I was afraid to go to sleep and I didn't want to be alone. It's like your brother's house, David. Mm -hmm. That was horrible because I was in a room by myself and there yeah. was nobody there to wake me up if it yeah. was happening. And yeah. I, I didn't hardly get any sleep. I did fall asleep in the truck, but yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> she wasn't was screaming in the, in the truck. And if she did, the cops would have pulled us over. <laughs> Why are you screaming, ma'am? What is going on? <laughs> so. Yeah, but it was it was very terrifying. And then um, I had when I got home, I got my high priestess to come over and and um, do a blessing on me and and smudge the house and 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 yeah. do everything. But it it had a lasting effect on me, and I didn't talk about it for at least a year. Yeah, so. I always I, I have pictures of, of of Annabelle on my phone, and I ask ask people if they want to see it. <laughs> yeah, nope. nope. They didn't want to see it, it over there. You know, and it, it affects different people different ways. Um, you know, there were a lot of people there that were talking about uh, their experiences that they were having with the doll at at the at the Warren Con. Um, mm -hmm. you know, so it just it's very selective and I would be very careful if you want to interact with that doll because it mm -hmm. will it will, it will I don't mess with you. The same, I don't think it's the same spirit that I don't know what it is. But. I don't. I, I think it's different. <laughs> yeah. I, I think whatever was in there before is gone, and something else has inhabited it. I yeah. Just, it, it was. It was so intense because Josh was with me also, like he was with Christy, and I was in there by myself also when when I was affected, and it was just I I just my eyes just kind of blurred over. I didn't I didn't go black or anything like that, but it was just hazy, and I took my glasses off, and Josh was he's like, "What's going on?" I go, "I can't see. I can't see anything." And he's like, what are you talking about? I go, I can't see. And he, you know, I'm just like kind of staggering around and he had to grab me. So I didn't run into anything or break anything. But, you know, I was like, that's it. I'm not, I'm not, I'm out of here. You know, I can't deal with this anymore. So, so it is, it is very, it's a very real thing when you go see Annabelle. So make yeah. sure to protect yourself, ground yourself or anything else before you go there. Most yeah. definitely. And yeah. just like I said, I didn't follow my own advice. Don't do shit you don't know how to do. <laughs> uh, I had Dan Rivera on a couple weeks ago, and he was talking about how he handles Annabelle and all the different yeah. things that they do. Yeah. And I just had this vision of him holding Annabelle and like moving her and her head turning and looking at her. Uh, oh, so no. I asked him, like, have you ever done that? He's like, no, and I would drop. <laughs> yeah. He didn't say he would drop, it, but his attitude was like, I would drop and run. Yeah. Bye. Right? <laughs> Bye. Poltergeist for real. <laughs> uh, it looks like, oh, Joe Frankie's finally joined us. Good morning, Hi, Joe. Joe. Good morning, Hi, Joe. Joe. <laughs> yeah, he's actually going to be hosting a show with me starting in June. Oh, also nice. On WLPK, oh, okay. So we're going to, we, nice. we have fun like you guys do on your show. <laughs> right. <laughs> we, we joke and laugh. And <laughs> that's, that's the big thing of, of how Christy and I are. You can really see the camaraderie that we, um that we have here. And it's like we were saying earlier, you know what? It doesn't have to be serious all the time. There are things that we talk about are serious and we'll get into, we get into it and things like that, but you have to bring, you have to bring out the personality to the person or somebody isn't, doesn't want to watch, you know, because mm -hmm. if they're just talking in monotone and this is how I investigate and everything like that, talking, it yeah, gets then, so boring. you know, and then, <laughs> then it's off and click and we don't make any money, you know, because yep. uh, nobody's <laughs> watching. Um, yep. You know, I, I've so, actually done that doing presentations at conferences, and then it's like I catch myself because, like, yeah, for a moment yeah. there, I'll hear myself. It's like, oh my god, what am I doing? <laughs> am I yeah. sounding this way for real? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, um, you know, it's 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 good that you have a partner, and it's great to mm -hmm. play off somebody, especially if, yeah. um, especially if you love them, because I love Christy. She's so yes, good. I love yeah. you too, David. Yeah. Aww. <laughs> no, I mean, she's. she's I told done... him I'm just going to do the introduction. He'll take yeah. the rest of the show. <laughs> no, she's. she's She's so she's so she's so great and and she's opened a lot of doors for us um mm -hmm. you know um and she's just been very supportive and I like just that. know a lot of people I can't help it That's okay <laughs> I know them now too they're my friends too Yes they're your friend now too <laughs> <laughs> that, That's um, why he partnered with you so he 
No, that's no. right. He did. That's no, exactly why he did it. No, Heather. I did not. He, no, he I did probably not. Probably stalked me and said, yes. "Ooh, that's the girl like, I want to know." Because she yeah, checked all of your friends and. <laughs> oh, she knows this person. I'm gonna friend her. No, he knows better than that because yeah. when I first met David, he was with another person. He was with another gentleman, and I say that word lightly, and <laughs> and they wanted me to work with them and. I wasn't going to work with that other person. And, but I didn't want to tell David that I didn't want to, you know, ruin anything that he had going with the other guy. Cause that's his business, not mine. All I knew is that I didn't want to be a part of what they had going on. Mm -hmm. And months and months on down the road, I think David, I, cause I wanted him to figure out for himself. Mm -hmm. You know, I didn't want to say, I didn't want to be the reason why they broke up. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know, but when he finally saw what I was seeing all along, he yeah. was like, wow. OK, I think he kind of got mad at me. Why didn't you tell me? I was like, well, it's not for me to tell. Yeah, yeah. It, it wasn't for me, you know, because I barely knew David. I'm not going to go and tell mm -hmm. him something. You know, you're the person you're with is a fraud and they're faking things. And this, yeah. that's just not something you go and tell somebody, you know, but I knew I didn't want to be a part of it. So and you said on the sidelines with popcorn waiting for him to discover. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And then when After he did, it. I'm like, okay, I'll work with you now. After the 14th time he was attacked, I was like, all right, that's, come on now. Yeah, a, a person you know? doesn't, doesn't pass out every time they go on an interview or, or investigation. I'm sorry. It's or get just, touched or get attacked or, you know, just something. Doesn't was, work I, know, right. I, I don't know how many investigations I've been on where we sat there twiddling our thumbs. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I mean, you know, picking your nose is the highlight of the evening. It's like, you know, <laughs> some, some investigations are like that. Yeah. yeah. We used to investigate a children's museum and we ended up playing with the blocks because there was oh. nothing happening one night. So we're there building stuff and playing with Legos. Well, you never know while you're doing that, something might come along and want to join. Right. I mean, well, Several Stop. times beforehand, I built a pyramid of just the little wood blocks. Right. And I'm like, if you're here, knock it over. And all of a sudden they fell down. That's awesome. Well, there you go. And I'm like, do it again as I'm building them as fast as I That's can. great. That's great. But then other times, nothing happens. Same location. So Yeah. Yeah. We, we I've, I've felt that way in, at, at the, I've been to North Carolina twice, the USS North Carolina twice. And the second time was more active for me. But I think, I think that was because it was a private investigation. I was there with Christy and, and Ghost Hunt Weekends and the Wraith Chasers, and there's mm -hmm. like 90 people in each room, and you're just like, <sighs> Yeah, this is not an investigation. They're fun to do, it's great, yeah. great networking, and, and we have a great relationship with, with uh, Chad and everybody like that. I'm not saying don't go, it's a great way right. to meet people, and if you want to learn how to investigate and, and things like that, and see, it, see if it's for you, and, and hang out with Chris and Mike and Christy and Chad and, and all the other crew there. I mean, they're incredible and you can learn, you can learn a lot from it. You can them. learn a lot. That's what, that's what basically ghost hunt weekends is for is for people that, that want to get into these big places, but can't afford to uh, rent it on their own, or mm -hmm. they don't want to rent it on their own. They want to be around other people. They want to learn how to use the equipment. They want to learn how to, you know, do the different things that we do like Estes method or, you know, just just see how things are done and they're it's perfect for that yeah, yeah. Um, especially if you don't like doing things alone and you want to feel you know safety and numbers type yeah, thing. It, yeah, it's yeah. Uh, it's really really good for that and plus like I said you can get into some of these really well-known places that you couldn't get in by yourself yeah so um so yeah ghost hunt weekends is great and then you get to meet Chris and Mike from the Wraith Chasers and and me sometimes if I'm there. <laughs> and what people need to understand is there's always something positive about anything. Right. Yes. And, and yes. people need to stop focusing on the negative stuff, you know. Right. There's yeah. always positive. Yeah. Yes. Figure out one thing that was good and focus on that. You know, whether right. it was you learn how to use a new piece of equipment or you, you know. Well, that's that's right. a, like like Christy said, that's a great thing is is is, you know, if it's your first time investigating, mm -hmm. um, you know, just kind of sit back and, and watch and take everything in like a sponge. And, mm -hmm. and after it's done, and ask go, questions. Ask yeah, questions. Yeah. Yeah. After it's done, just go, okay, how do I do this? And what, I, what can I do? So I don't be affected and things like that. And, and they'll, they'll teach you, you know, yeah. I mean, we're always here. Christy and I are always here to pay it forward. You mm -hmm. know, I mean, we love doing yeah. this. And if you ask us questions, we're, we're going to tell you the truth and you might not like what you're hearing, 
You know, like, <laughs> I don't think you're ready for the Estes method right now. <laughs> you know, yep. I think you need to wait a little bit, you know, yeah. and, and, mm -hmm. and, yeah. and see how it is. And, 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 and that's why there. we host Ghost Education 101 is sure. to, you know, we discovered during COVID that there was definitely a lack of truthful mm -hmm. information. Yeah. <laughs> right. It was a lot of shows were coming on, you know, during COVID that were mimicking the TV shows. And sure. it's like, you know, so we just, it started off as it was a presentation every two weeks. Yeah. And then now we've expanded to get other people to come on and help with that. And yep. I'll be on. <laughs> You've been on before, right? We had you on another yeah. time too, didn't we? Yeah. 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 We had a we had a great discussion before. It was yeah. about some things, and you know, I was asking questions, and you know, I learned a lot from that show. And, and this one's going to be about orbs. Yep. And I actually we have one coming up on Ouija boards, so oh. I might have, to have Christy on that one. I have Christy on because <laughs> yeah. she's the one. She's the one who plays with those. I. Yep. Yeah, we have um, a Joe Frankie's going to be on that one okay. as the uh, skeptic. Don't use. Yeah. <laughs> and ah. then we have um, the Sin City Witch from Vegas is going to be on that and then okay. there is a um i forgot her name but she's a i guess you would call her a ouija ouija board specialist right from australia wow you we'll should have well. you should have uh you should contact the guy who owns the uh the museum in salem and see what oh, he has great. to say okay. yeah yeah, yeah. He'll come on great. i forget his name but we had uh we had a great time there that we were there with uh, yeah. patty and and uh heather and myself and then christy and he was just like, yeah, get in here. And it, it was absolutely amazing in the place. All it was the just different so amazing. words everywhere, yeah. the stories yeah. behind all of it. I absolutely loved it. Yeah, it was really cool. If you ever go to Salem, make sure to check it out. Yep. It's really cool. It's in, a Harry, it's it's in the back of a Harry Potter store. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> <laughs> it's really, really cool. Um, all right. Well, I think I have to get out of here. I've got a few things to do. Not a problem. I was going to, we're actually coming up on another commercial break and oh, okay. you guys are free to go. I do appreciate yeah. you guys joining me today. It's definitely, well, definitely you. a fun thing. I didn't get to all my questions. Actually, I didn't get to any of my questions, but hey. It's okay. We'll have us back on. Have us back on. We love being here. Like, jabber. I'm a jabber, jabber, jabber yeah. box. You never have to worry about having dead silence in an interview. I will, right. I will, I yeah. will come up with something. Yeah, make <laughs> so, sure. Uh, Make sure to check out our show on Paraflix. Uh, mm -hmm. Season yeah. nine is coming up uh, at the end of this month. And also we'll be uh, at Fort Mifflin, August 12th. We'll be at the Hell House Paracon, September 9th, Mass Paracon on the 22nd. September. And then we've already been booked for Lake Shawnee, the abandoned amusement park for May next year, May 25th next year. So we've already oh. been booked for that. Yeah. So look for us on the road. Come, come and meet us if you're in the area, you know, and, and, uh, Come out and hang out with us. The, the Fort great. Mifflin is a supernatural sleepover. So yeah. you get to spend Love the whole the night. Party, there. Pillow yeah. fights. <laughs> uh, definitely looking forward to all of those. And thank you guys again for joining us. Yeah, yeah I Definitely sure. had a great time. For sure. And I will definitely be in touch to get you guys on again. Yeah, right. absolutely. You, Anytime. Anytime. Thank we'll you so see much. you down the road, okay? Bye. Have a great Bye. day. Bye. <laughs> And everyone else, we will be right back after this quick commercial break. everyone welcome back um, hope you guys had a great time watching uh and listening christy and david are amazing and like i had said i hadn't even gotten to any of my questions we had so much fun talking and sharing stories that i will definitely have them on again in the future and but like we had talked about dave will be joining ghost education 101 next week on wednesday and um 
like he said, our discussion is on orbs, so it's going to be a lot of fun. We'll be discussing everything, you know, of course, with Ghost Education 101. We want to make sure that we help educate you and get you the information so you can be successful paranormal researchers and not be afraid of things that go bump in the night. Uh, so we'll be discussing what makes a real orb, um, how often they're seen, and how to identify a real orb, orb versus um, pareidolia or dust and backscatter and bugs and um, videos and also on uh, film. So make sure you tune into that. That link will be um, posted on my uh, Facebook page at Dr. Heather Lee, or you can go to Facebook at Ghost Education 101 or watch live on YouTube at Ghost Education. That is there as well. So definitely so looking forward to those. And Lee, yeah, they are, they are a lot of fun. Um, I actually need to go see them when they're together live because that'll be uh, a great, great entertainment and a lot of um, things to learn from them. They have great experiences and uh, true, truly great people in this field. We need, we need more people like them hanging around uh, the paranormal field. So what I wanted to go into today, let me pull up my notes here real quick. I wanted to, um, here it goes. I've been asked several by several people, um, how, you know, let me find the question here. It was actually, it was a mailbag, mailbag email that came in a few weeks ago. It was, hi, Heather, I'm trying to find a reputable team to join and start doing some paranormal research, but all I'm finding are groups that want to go to abandoned places and he put in quotes, hunt ghosts. Um, how do I know if I'm finding a reputable team that is best for me? Thank you for your help, Alex. Uh, so I know I've talked about how to find out if it's a reputable team or not. So I kind of did a little bit more research into a few things and want to, um, share some information of what I've found and what I've experienced. And of course, a lot of what I'm going to say is not of um, popular opinion <laughs> among many ghost uh, paranormal enthusiasts or ghost hunters, um, especially I, I call them paranormal tourists, um, just because it doesn't go with what many think they're doing or thinking they're trying to do. So the first thing you want to do is to um, find out if they're a reputable team. And the best way to do it is for if they're a club, which means they're just going out to haunted locations and stuff like that, um, they won't have an LLC or a nonprofit. You want to, if you want to be part of an actual team that does research, goes to clients' homes and uh, conducts um, actual investigations, you want to make sure that they have insurance for the team. Um, and when it comes to they need to be more transparent and I'll get more into this stuff. Um, like if they're an LLC, that means they're for profit. You need to understand that when they sell or do things, they're doing it to make a profit. And then you have nonprofit, which means that they're, you know, anything that they sell um, or any donations that they get goes to benefit the organization, you know, the clients, um, and everything like that. And then the insurance is there just to protect um, you. Don't be afraid. If the team is reputable, ask to see their paperwork. You know, ask for proof. Don't don't hesitate or ever be afraid to say, you know, hey, I want to see, you know, your insurance paperwork. I want to make sure that, you know, you guys have everything. If they get offended by that, they might not be the team for you. And, and it, this is just information. Um, this is how I would go about. I've learned um, a lot from being on a couple different teams and uh, working with several people. And this is a combination of my personal experience and information that others have shared with me over the se last several years. Um, know who you are paying. So um, if you're buying products, you know, is it for profit? Um, where does the money, if it's a nonprofit or you're making a donation or buying products, where does the money go? What is it used for? Um, does it benefit the organization, the members, clients? or does it all get used to pay um, the leader or the founder of the group a salary? Um, ask to see paperwork, like I had mentioned, and also check your state laws. Uh, one thing I noticed um, various different states is um, some LLCs, depending on how they're classified, and in some states, they do not allow LLCs to uh, bring on volunteers or unpaid workers. It's actually classified as um, an employment violation. Um, I don't really want to use the term slave labor, but that's uh, some of the references that I've seen. It just depends on what state you're in. So if the organization, because um, I know several ghost teams throughout, you know, including several here in Florida, they're LLCs because they offer ghost tours and that's um, for profit. And so, but some LLCs, you know, they actually 
because they're for profit, they have to pay everybody who is on um, the team doing work is what they needed to do. So make sure you look into that. Um, and then personally, my personal thing, if they're not an LLC or a nonprofit, they really shouldn't be doing residential investigations because if they're not going to take the time to register and become, I, I guess, legitimate, um, they don't have the insurance to you know, protect themselves or to protect the client when they go in there. And that's just my personal opinion. I really don't feel that you know those teams are the ones that are in it for the fun, the paranormal tourism, the excitement, the thrill, and the getting out there and enjoying themselves. Other ways that you can determine if it's a legitimate organization is check their social media pages. Um, look for inconsistencies, um, their desire to get more clicks, false evidence, um, egos. Um, false information, look into that. Um, the other thing you could do is ask to go on an investigation or attend a team meeting to learn more about how they do things. Um, and then some of these teams make false promises. You need to, if you're noticing those false promises, um, I'm trying to think of one, like I've seen all over Facebook, some teams, um, people, you know, charge for residentials and, you know, that's each team's prerogative. I, I have my own opinions on that, but I don't judge anyone for charging because some people need to pay for travel equipment and whatnot. And, but if they're going to charge, they need to be an LLC or a nonprofit. Um, but false promises that I've seen online, I'm trying to think of one that I saw recently, you know, we promise to cleanse your home free of spirits is one. Um, and you really can't promise that because the spirits have free will. They can come and go as they please. Um, you know, or backing it by a guarantee, you know, we guarantee we'll cleanse your home or we'll come back and, you know, kind of almost like your exterminator, you know, we'll come back for free and redo it. Um, and, and just, you know, it's a whole bunch of different things. And then you could also, I just saw Lee saying arguing, and I don't know if this is the same thing that I was thinking, but a lot of infighting in the group, people arguing with each other, um, talking bad about other organizations, no matter how, no matter how much someone doesn't like a certain TV show or a certain investigator or a certain team, there, there's no need to publicly put on Facebook names and bash them. You, you know, it, we're all trying to do, you know, not everyone in this field is in it for the same reason, but we're all trying to make peace and get it more reputable. That's never going to happen if we don't start, you know, stop arguing and carrying on with our different things. Um, so we need to focus on us. Um, so moving on, I was doing research and I did a lot more research this weekend on it because it was kind of interesting. Um, I did an article for a client a while back that was on, yep, Joe says, always be respectful and humble. Exactly. Um, and talking about other team members too. Yes, I, I've been involved in that. I've seen people be a victim of that. It, it's really sad about how some people talk about each other in this field. We we. They, before I get into what I was going to talk about going, that kind of brought something up is the whole concept of para unity. It's, I, I believe it's a great idea. Um, you guys have heard me talk about this before when we've had other guests on, it's a great idea. It's a great concept in theory, but it needs to be, it can't be one of those things where someone comes to you and says, I'm a paranormal investigator. You have to accept me. You have to promote me. You have to like what I'm doing. You have to, you know, X, Y, and Z. It, it's not like that. It's, we need to, be sharing information, sharing evidence, supporting one another. But in order for me to support somebody and have that pair unity concept between the two of us, we must um, have worked together. Uh, there must be a two-way street. We have to respect each other. And I have to know that, you know, whoever I'm working with or promoting, that they don't um, fake evidence, um, their ego's not too big, and, you know, and they're humble and having, you know, a lot of fun. So, um, with that. Anyway, a couple weeks, or a couple weeks, couple, actually, wow, a couple months ago already now, I had done an article for a client because I do freelance writing on the side. Um, that That's my day job, I guess you would call it, on um, different signs of a cult. And I was starting to notice a lot of similarities compared to how some of these paranormal groups operate. I'm noticing a lot of them operate more like a cult. And um, they're only in it to advance their personal um, public presence of the leaders and while having other members work hard, which, you know, if you think about it, 
you have um, the FLDS. They um, operate similar to a cult where everybody has to give all of their property over. And even though I'm going to share the different um, how it differs a little bit, but you guys are going to notice some similarities, I hope. If not, I'm completely off the rails and just came up with this uh, theory <laughs> to, to pass time on the show. Anyway, I'm just kidding. Um, so you have the FLDS, um, Nexium. Everybody was in it to advance the uh, leaders and increase their public pre uh, presence and so on while everyone else did all the work. Um, trying to think. You have the Doomsday Cult. Um, anyway, there, there, there are several of them. Um, but I ended up coming across an article in the research on the top 10 signs that you might be in a cult or that a group is a cult. Um, so the first one is the leader has ultimate authority. So um, like, for example, in the FLDS, you still have Warren Jeffs, who claims to be the prophet, even though there are some people who are coming out saying they're the new prophet because he's in jail. Um, if a new prophet comes around, they have ultimate control of the group. Um, no one else can make decisions. Um, you can also, you're often, this is often recognized, um, by phrases such as this is my group. Um, you get a lot of eyes and me and my, um, I'm in charge. You do what I say, um, and all of that. So I've seen several people complain, um, about the group that they're in, um, not letting them do what they want to do. Um, not letting them research what they want to research. Um, they're just kind of stuck. It's, you know, all the group does is go and investigate different things. And I do want to clarify real quick. I'm not saying that paranormal groups are a cult. <laughs> it sounds like a joke to have sense times you might be in a cult. Yeah, I'm not saying that paranormal groups are a cult. I'm just saying that um, there's a lot of similarities, which kind of, you know, opened my eyes a little bit. Um, group suppressed skepticism is number two. This means critical thinking is not allowed. I've seen so many people who don't use critical thinking in the paranormal field, and that is the number one thing we need to be using. We need to think for ourselves. We need to look at things from a scientific manner. We need to look at things from different aspects, you know, including spiritual manners, um, where people are just, you know, this is how the group believes when it comes to orbs, spirits, and demons. Um, for example, if a team leader or um, someone on the, you know, whoever's running the investigation, whether not the organization's leader, but just a team leader says it's a demon, everyone must agree. If um, one of the uh, leaders of the group um, says that that's an orb in a photo, everyone must agree. Someone can't say, no, it's not an orb or here, listen to me why it might not be. It's, you know, once it's determined something, you know, and then other groups say, you know, hey, all of our evidence, anything that looks like an orb is an orb. There's no analyzing it or any negative energy is a demon. There, there's no considering it. Um, the other thing that I've seen, and this goes back to Joe, Joe starting his own cult. Um, I've seen this in a lot of groups and um, especially um, recently is the group will delegitimize former members. For example, this goes back to the talking bad about people. Um, if someone leaves a group, um, the rest of the members uh, start talking bad about the person, trying to um, discredit them, trying to make it hard for them to do what they're trying to do in the field. And it just really a lot. I've seen a lot of people give up and leave the paranormal field because of the way their last group was trying to damage the reputation or their character, which just I don't think is right. Um, the group is paranoid of others. Um, in this aspect, even though you might not be paranoid of others, I'm noticing that um, so many groups are afraid to share evidence and afraid to talk about different things because they're afraid someone will steal their evidence, their cases, their members, etc. cetera. Um, they're always belittling others, not willing to share investigation locations, always fear that others are being more successful than them. In that aspect, I kind of fit that into with the uh, paranoid of other groups. Hey, Howard, how are you doing? I, I need to chat with you later, so I'll make sure I reach out to you um, so we can talk later. Um, and then number five, the group relies on shame cycles. Um, this is a lot of things I've seen. Um, and this goes with ego, telling members that they don't know what they're doing. Um, belittling any accomplishments members make on their own without the group. So, for example, if... Um, someone is succeeding or doing things that other members either don't want to do or they didn't think of first, um, they make that person feel bad. So that way they kind of 
knock them off the pedestal, I guess you would say, and try to make them rely on the group and that, you know, they, they don't have individual thinking. Um, the leader is above the law. I've heard this from several people that I've talked to. They feel like nothing can affect them. Um, often some teams conduct illegal activities. They break into abandoned buildings. They um, don't get permission to investigate locations. They, um, again, make false promises that could be misleading. Um, several teams are not an LLC or nonprofit. And those that are LLCs or nonprofits are either not paying taxes or filling out the annual nonprofit statements. Um, so there's a lot of different aspects where that could fit into it. Um, your diagnostic is correct. <laughs> Thank you. I, I was starting to worry about it because when I came up with this, it's like, I, I'm, and I'm not pinpointing any one particular group. This is um, a broad general. I've seen it from a lot of people and I've talked to a lot of people who um, feel that this does fit the group that they used to be a part of. And these 10 things are one of the reasons why I stick with my small group of three people. I do work with other teams, um, but I do like my small group of three people, um, which is my husband and my son. And I say it's because I trained them right. Um, so number seven, the group uses thought form methods. Um, they never really answer questions. Um, instead, they answer questions with questions or cliches, such as follow your leader, do what you're told, um, and stuff like that. Another number eight would be the group is elitist, which means they're full of egos and they have a solution for the world's problem, paranormal problems. Um, they uh, get free manual labor, which is usually uh, such as in a nonprofit, and it's they do it with heightened recruitment efforts to further their cause. Um, it's this is where these teams get so big that they. Um, and, and there's a difference because I've seen a lot of teams that do expand um, to different states, to expand worldwide, and they're doing great, but they follow all the rules. They're nonprofits. They're legitimate nonprofits. They follow local and state laws and they do all of that stuff. And they're just not willy nilly recruiting anyone and everyone. They, If someone comes to them, they go through a strict process to get in there. And um, but they uh, they, they feel that they're, you know, the egos, the more people in the group, the bigger the ego gets because they have all of these, I guess you would call them followers if you were to follow the cult line. Another thing is <laughs> they're legends in their own minds. Yep. And um, so number nine, we're almost done here, guys. Uh, the group has no financial transparency. This means no one besides the leader or maybe one or two others know where the money is coming from and where it goes. Um, ethical organizations have nothing to hide and they can show where every penny goes, including for travel equipment, um, website hosting fees, and they have a list and they also have a de detailed list of where the money's coming from. Both of those are needed for a legitimate LLC because you have to show taxes, income and loss statements, and also for a nonprofit because you need to show your financial statements to remain a nonprofit. Um, so that all falls under the legitimacy of that. And the final one is the group conducts routine testing of the loyalty of its members. Um, and this one I've noticed a lot. It's more or less like they're not allowed to um, communicate with other groups. They're not allowed to be friends with certain people, um, especially former members. And this kind of is one of those things where it's like they don't want other members to, I don't really want to say learn the truth about their group, but it just kind of follows into you're just kind of restricted. You're the only paranormal people you can talk to are from your group, you know, and I know you don't want to bring on someone like if you're going on a client residential investigation, you don't want to bring someone who's not a part of your team because a, they're not covered under your insurance and, and B, you don't know how they work. Um, but you should still be allowed to consult with people outside your team, especially if you have a case that you don't know how to handle. Um, I know when we had a case in Vegas once that involved what the client said was a demonic entity, and she claimed that a whole bunch of different people said it was as well. I reached out to Reverend Sean Whittington, who's out in Vegas as well, in case we needed an exorcist at the site with us. So you should be able to do stuff like that, where a lot of these um, elitist type groups kind of don't. They, they shy away from that, and that's where, you know, that's where the whole mentality of we can't work with others comes from in this field. So I hope I didn't bore you guys with that. Um, it was just something that I had thought of after doing research and I'd been wanting to do it a little bit more. And I found it very interesting how it all fell into place where <laughs> everything, um, 
you know, like I said, everything fell into place and it's like, wow, I can, some groups fit one or two, other groups fit all 10. Um, and even, you can even do this with some individuals, you know, some people who are just solo investigators, a lot of them fit into that aspect as well. So hope you'd enjoy, enjoyed that. And oh, hi, Jamie, thank you for joining us today. Um, I know you're just coming in towards the end, but the replay will be up on Facebook, YouTube, and also on my um, podcast channel. So I'll make sure I share those links for everybody to see as well. So I do want to get you guys excited for future shows coming up. Make sure you mark your calendars. I have Catherine Sorilos coming on next week and we are going to, I need to message her to talk to her, but I'm going to get her to do the, um, I'm going to do the Zaner card experiment that um, Lee mentioned last week that I should try. So I'm going to try that with her and you guys. So that'll be a fun little experiment that we do while she's here. And also I want to try to get her, I'm going to make sure she has the supplies to do um, her uh, where she can spin the piece of paper. So I'll make sure I find that old video and share that so you guys can see it. And I'll make sure I have her prepared to do that. I want to see her do it live on our show. I think that would be kind of fun, fun to experience. And then on May 30th, we have Mike Cardenas coming back. He is the founder and uh, leader of the um, Midnight Paranormal Society. He is amazing guy. Love him. Um, love chatting with him. We have a lot of fun discussing different ideas and um, experiments. The Connor sisters will be joining us on June 6th. June 13th, I have Natalie Creter joining us. June 20th, Joe, if you're still here, mark your calendar so you don't forget. Joe Frankie will be joining us. On June 27th, we have um, Archbishop Bishop Kenneth Torres joining us. And if anyone out there watching is available on July 4th, I know it's July 4th, but we only are live from 10 to noon Eastern. So you still have your day to enjoy the holiday. Please let me know because I have July 4th open. If not, um, I think I'm going to pull out one of my presentations for you guys to, to watch and listen. On uh, July 11th, I have C.L. Thomas joining us. July 18th, Jeff Schlachter will be returning. He was um, invited on as a last minute guest because I had a guest cancellation. Um, so he will be joining us as an official guest. And then I do have several others that I'm working on. So make sure you stay tuned to all of that. One thing I am working on, if anyone watching is not a paranormal investigator, I want to have... Um, I want to have at least two people, but up to four uh, people who've had paranormal experiences in their lives, but they are not paranormal researchers. Um, I know that's hard to find, but especially if you guys are watching a show for, <laughs> for the information on how to be a team, but reach out to me on my Facebook page at Dr. Heather Lee or at Exploring the Paranormal Show, and I will make sure that I get you on that round table. I don't have a date yet, but I'm thinking it'll probably be in either August or September on that one. Then real quick for Ghost Education 101 next uh, next week, 524 at 9 p.m. Eastern, we have a panel discussion on orbs with David Taylor, Bill Slevin, Larry Lawson, and Nick Carbani will be joining us. On June 7th, we have Ron Stokes. On June 21st, we have John Zaffis will be joining us. July 5th, we have Blake Best. And I have a couple shows in here with just individual guests just to kind of break up the summer monotony and do that. But at the end of July, we'll be returning to our panel discussions and presentations. So we also have um, panel discussion on Ouija boards. Reverend Sean Whittington will be joining us. Robert Bradley will be doing a pre presentation on science and the paranormal. Um, we have a round table of collecting evidence and then um, Nick Carbani and his co-host from Old World Paranormal, I think is the name of the group, will be joining us for discussion. Philip, my co-host, has a presentation. Uh, the Haunted Librarian will be joining us um, to for a presentation on the legalities of hosting a haunted house. And then the members of Georgia Paranormal will be rejoining us for a roundtable discussion later on. But then I have so many other people that I'm reaching out to um, we do have that, I don't, I, did I skip over it? Oh, the panel discussion on Ouija boards, I did mention that. Um, but we do have several other people um, that I'm reaching out to for discussions on the thinning veil, protecting yourself from the paranormal, tips for new investigators, dreams and interpretations, photographic and, and analysis and stuff. 
Okay, Lee, perfect. I'll keep an eye out for that message. Love to have you on the show. We'll have to pick a date and get that going. So as you can see, a lot of things are happening. And of course, I can't forget, Joe and I will be starting our own show coming up on June 8th. I'm, and we still need to pick our topics and get those out to you guys. But that will be a lot of fun. And that will be here on WLTK DB Radio for um, Thursday nights at 10 p.m. Eastern until about 9 or 10, 10, 10 to 9, yeah, no, until 10.55, so that way Todd has time to get ready for the next show after us. So not quite an hour, but we'll still have a lot of fun. Yep, so, oh, yes, definitely the Georgia girls will be back um, for the Ghost Education 101. That They are absolutely amazing, that whole team. Philip, I do have to applaud him. He did an amazing job getting the people for his team. He uh, took the time, took the effort, and everyone on his team has input. It's a shame, a shame that I don't live closer to him for me to be able to uh, join in on his team. But I do uh, look forward to working with him um, in the future as well, which we're working on. So we we shall see. Um, I've known Philip for for several years now, and we work well together. It's just I can only imagine how well we would work together in person. Same thing with Joe. I mean, Joe and I've only met once in person, so. <laughs> It's the Georgia cult. That's what we're going to call it now from now on. <laughs> That's how I'll introduce them in the show. So anyway, I do want to thank you guys for joining us today. I hope you had fun. Hope I didn't babble on too much at the end. Um, again, my guests today were absolutely amazing. Um, don't forget um, all the upcoming shows and the courses that I'm teaching. More information will be coming out about that. And um, that sounds about like everything. Once is enough. Exactly, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you, Lee, for joining us. Um, and I do appreciate everyone being here. If you guys have any topics you ever want to dis um, see discussed or anything like that, let me know. I'm more than happy to discuss just about everything. Um, luckily, today I was more prepared than I normally am. So hopefully as uh, time goes on, the shows just keep getting better and better. And, and like David said, the first thing I'm going to work on is my, you know, my backdrop. <laughs> like I told him, I know my fault. I, I'm only taking it one day at a time when it comes to everything. And uh, this is me doing me. So anyway, you guys have a great day. I will see you next week when Catherine's with us. Have a great week. The truth is here and now on WLTK DB Talk Radio at WLTKDB.com.